This is the first video for Chapter 11 in the Microsoft Excel 2013 Comprehensive Textbook, and I'm on page 694. I have already opened the Snowbound Vacation Rentals data file, you can see from the title up here, and we've maximized and um, we're going to save this with a new name, so File, Save As. And uh, I'm going to go to the same folder I'm in right now. And we're going to call this Snowbound Vacation Rentals Analysis. And I already got one out there called Analysis 1, so we'll just call this one Analysis 2. And now we're on page 695. It looks like we're going to add some comments here. And I want to uh, right-click on A7. So that is this cell right here. And I want to choose Insert Comment. And I get a little yellow box that opens up here. And it will have the name of the owner of this computer on it. And uh, we need to enter some text here, so uh, it's going to be note to Martin. Okay, so just type in the comment and then click someplace outside the box and you can always tell a cell has a comment in it because there will be a little red tab in the upper right hand corner. You've probably seen some green tabs in here before that appear in the upper left hand corner. Those green tabs are there when Excel thinks that you have you may have made a mistake. Uh, so if you do see a green tab there you should always uh, there's a little box that will pop up next to it and you should click on that box and, and read what it says because uh, Sometimes it is a mistake and sometimes it isn't. So you can read it and decide for yourself then uh, whether you made a mistake or not. Okay, so comment's going to have the red tabs. Now we want to go to A9 and right click and insert a comment. And we have another note to Martin. And And that's a lot like the last one, and uh, kind of ran out of room here, so I can make the box a little bit bigger so we can see all of it. Okay, and then just click someplace else and it'll go away. And it looks like we need a comment in A12 as well, so let's right click and do insert comment. And note to Abby. Okay, and let's make that a little bit bigger as well. And click someplace else. And at the top, page 697 now, it says we want to save it. So go up here and click on the little floppy disk, which has been obsolete for like 10 years now. Okay, and now we're on page 697, uh, number one. And uh, we're going to go to the review tab here and we want to click on show all comments and it will show all the comments for us and now let's turn to page 698 actually they have us hide that it doesn't say anything about hiding it um, so i'll just leave it it says uh, press right click on A7 for the shortcut menu and I want to uh, edit the comment that is already there and I want the word accurate between need and count so I need an accurate count as opposed to an inaccurate count um, and then click on 
someplace else just to stop editing and um, we want to click on this it's just a toggle so now it will hide the comments again um, now we're on the bottom of page 699 and formatting comments and we're going to click on A7 and we're going to click on uh, edit comment up here that's another way to get to it and then I just want to select the text of the comment Okay, so that'd be everything except my name, I guess. So I'll drag the mouse over it and um, right click. And now we're on the top of page 700. And I want to choose uh, Format Comment. And I get the Format Comment, Format Comment dialog box. And I want it to be bold and I want it to be red. And well, this is interesting. Um, I'm getting different. Oh, there's red, I guess. And that's not the color palette I'm used to seeing. Click on OK. And now it's red and bold. And now we're on number three. And uh, we want to use the sizing handles to comment it or to resize it so that the entire comment is visible. I've already done that. And just grab the corners here and you can make it any size you want it to be. And then we want to go to A7 and click again and the comment goes away. And then point to it. And when you point to it uh, and pause the mouse over it, the comment will appear. Okay. Now, um, we're going to go to uh, something that I don't think you're going to use very often at all. Um, formatting the background of a worksheet. Um, outside of this textbook, I don't think I've ever formatted the background of a worksheet, and I've used a lot of spreadsheets in my life. Uh, but we'll go through a tap or click the page layout on the ribbon. So let's go up here to page layout. And... Um, we want to click on the background button here. And what we want to do is we want to find something from a file. So we're going to click on the browse button here. And then we want to go to the files uh, that came with the book. And uh, the only file that came with the uh, stuff for chapter 11 here is uh, snow tree so click on insert and this should pretty much uh, match what you see on the bottom of page 702 and I do not have grid lines showing so I don't have to worry about uh, turning that off and then we want to save the workbook um, I don't know why you would ever do that. Uh, top page 703, add a watermark to a worksheet. Um, this is something you might actually want to do once in a while. Um, click the insert tab on the ribbon up here. And one of the things that we want to insert is um, word art. And word art is way over here. And we want fill gray 25%, um, which is this one right here. Fill gray 25% background to inner shadow. Uh, I'm on number two on page 703 now. And um, then I'm using a mouse, and you probably are too, so we want to. Um, point to the border and we want to drag it to the center of the worksheet content so just kind of eyeball it here and uh, that's where our watermark is going to go and then click here and just drag your mouse over what exists and you can put your own uh, watermark text in and then we want to um, 
right click on this and get a shortcut menu and from the shortcut menu we want uh, format text effects and whoops we lost that let's um, There we go. I was clicking too low. Um, so we get this uh, text effects options over here. And uh, we want to click on text options up here, which is already selected for us. And then we want to click on text fill and outline, which is the first one here. And then we want to click on text fill down here to get our options. And then what we want to do is we want to adjust the transparency and we want the transparency to be uh, 80%. And you can either type it in or do it the hard way like I'm doing here and just bounce on the up arrow. And then we want to close that. So that should make it lighter than it was before and I don't think that made it lighter than it was before. Let's try selecting it first and then try right clicking and go to format text effects and let's try that again and let's put in an 80 here and hit enter and now we can close that and uh, yeah it's quite a bit lighter now. I didn't select the text the first time uh, and then we want to close that and then we want to um, rotate this a little bit and so there's this little round handle up here and if you get on that and twist it just a little bit uh, you'll get something that looks like that and that's pretty close to what's in the book and that brings us to the end of that section so we'll stop this video here and we'll continue with the next one on page 705